G'day guys and welcome to another episode of Paul's Garage. Uh, this episode uh, is a continuation of Project DH. We're almost there. Um, a few days ago, or actually about a week ago, I sent my distributor away uh, to a fellow in North Epping, uh, Vintage Racing Developments. Uh, his name's David. Uh, he's done some work for me before. He rebuilt the Gordini distributor for me. Um, so uh, he received that on Tuesday last week and he sent it back to me on Friday last week and it's Monday morning 9am and I have the rebuilt distributor right here. So what we're going to be doing in this episode um, is replacing uh, that distributor, putting it back uh, and fit the gearbox. Now the gearbox, uh, when I was putting the, um, the, the thrust bearing and the, the clutch fork and everything back yesterday morning, uh, I noticed um, that the, there was a little bush missing, missing where the um, return spring fits, or the assistance spring or whatever it is that they want to call it. Um, yeah, that's going to be difficult to find. I thought, um, but I reached out uh, to the Facebook group and there's a fellow, um, his name's Peter, uh, he's sending me one down from, from Brisbane, otherwise I was going to get them, um, uh, get a couple made up uh, by a local engineer here. Um, so what I'll do, uh, David's really good when he's, when he's doing stuff, he sends you photo, photographs of the, of the distributor and uh, what's wrong with it? It was working okay. The vacuum advance unit wasn't working, so it's got a new vacuum advance unit on it. Um, the inside was was very dry, um, and as much as it was working, he said it was going to let you down. You know, within the next couple of thousand miles, anyway. So glad I've done that. So he he updates you with a lot of photos and things like that. So I will put um, a few photographs before and after photographs um, on just after this intro and um, and then we'll go and fit it up. So these uh, these first few photographs here of uh, when I sent the distributor down to him uh, inside there you can see she's a bit of a mess she's a bit um, bit, bit cruddy inside um, you know yeah and this is the, the shaft you might be able to see some rust marks on there uh, but they're not in an area that's uh, of any relevance uh, and there it is all, all cleaned up and and going back together it's looking uh, looking almost new there uh, inside almost finished new points new condenser as you can see there um, and then uh, this distributor is actually out of an HT it's not an original EH one uh, so he tells me um, and there it is all completed and uh, uh, ready to go ready to come home and go back in the car so I did take a photograph of this on my phone um, of the exact position it was in so that I could put it back exactly where it came out and that should be about perfect there to be it looks to be about right where it was I'm going to come around that is that, so that looks like spot on to where it came out the engine hasn't moved um, 
since I since I took this out. So that, uh, that there should be spot on to where it was. Of course, it'll need um, the engine will need timing and. That's all right if I can get it back into exactly the same position. As you can see, it's got new points, new condenser, um, new new vacuum unit. I'll just put the distributor cap back on. Get some. Uh, Some ignition leads. Two. That should be the number one, I think. No, four. Okay, so number one should go there. <laughs> should. We always say should. Uh, this is number two. So that's, that's one, four, two. There. Number three. Should go directly there. Four. Coil can go in the centre. And then we've got number five coming over here. Number six. Should we go there? So that should be all ready to go. Um, I can't start the engine or do anything yet, but um, we will certainly get that done in this episode. Uh, I want to do a compression test on it too, and maybe tidy up some of this wiring here, get it looking just a little bit nicer. All right, so the next job will be the gearbox. So the book says 50 foot pounds. <clears throat> These bolts. And why is that in today's measurements? <laughs> 50 foot pounds. Um, I thought maybe that might have been something else that's changed. No. Since the ye old 
good in time. <laughs> still use them. Surely, when I just put that on, I'm assuming it's in gear. <laughs> Compression test here and 120, 130, 140. Okay, in again. All right. Okay, and again. Alright. Alright, we're well, pretty much across the board. We're 140. 140 PSI, so can't complain about that. Bye. Morning guys and welcome to uh, uh, Paul's Garage again. Uh, this is day two on getting the EH um, started and gearbox back in and all that sort of stuff. We only did three and a half hours yesterday, uh, even though I retired uh, from full-time work in, in August uh, 21, uh, I have a part-time job uh, which I had to go to yesterday. It gets in the way of working over here in the shed, but anyway, you do what you do. Um, so yesterday we got the we got the gearbox in, uh, drive shaft, everything all all tidied up under there, um, except for the um, I've got to put the speedo cable in. I was waiting on some uh, uh, air conditioning O rings to turn up, which turned up yesterday afternoon. Um, so I'll put that back together. Got to put oil in it. Uh, but as you saw, we didn't get it started. Uh, I ran out of time to to start mucking around with it. Um, but what I've done this morning is I've uh, brought it up to um, top dead centre number one. Had a look at the uh, the timing mark um, on the uh, on the flywheel on the front. It all lines up as top dead centre, but it's uh, as I thought it's not pointing at uh, at number one cylinder. So um, the distributor that is the the rotor button. So I will um, uh, fix that distributor up. Um, make it point to number one and uh, see if we uh, if we get some action
Not sure if that should be firing just before or right on it. I might have to muck around with it a little bit. I think that's it. running it's not quite right I think I've got uh, a little bit more to play around with that uh, that distributor to get it correct uh, I think it's got to turn one one more bit other than that um, she's running again so I'll muck around with this a little bit longer I'll get it running properly and um, um, then we'll put it put it back up in the air put some gearbox oil in connect up the uh, the speedo and the like and uh, we should be done so that's it for this episode guys thanks for watching um, next episode we will um, uh, take it for a drive take it somewhere nice and we'll uh, we'll just go over uh, exactly exactly what we've uh, we've done to get it this far it's been a bit of a journey uh, lots of parts especially suspension wise but um, yeah no nah, it's all good Alright guys, like, share, subscribe, uh, do what you need to do, push that like button and um, um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, <clears throat> just uh, just something to, to finish the day off for me. Um, as you know, got the gearbox and everything in, I just uh, put oil in it and guess what? It leaks. So the whole job's got to come back out again and have the leak repaired. I can't believe it. Absolutely unbelievable and absolutely pissed off. Anyway, I hope you share my pain. Like, share and subscribe and um, I'll see you next time. So there you can see the drip forming. See how quickly it forms. From that little aluminium Welsh plug. That was not a spot that it was leaking from before.